This week's uh, video is a special request from somebody doing the master's program, level one of the master's program, where you knit a mitten. They wanted to know the best method for joining stitches in the round, since this is something you do in the mitten. And there are a variety of techniques for doing this, and I'm going to show you all of them, and then you can pick the one you like best. The most important thing for any of these is that you don't twist the stitches on the needle when you um, cast them on and that you make sure they're all lined up properly with the cast on edge at the bottom, the stitches at the top, and they're not twisted. If you get this messed up, uh, you will know it on a couple of rows and pretty much the only solution is to undo and start again. So that's the most important step. Now the method that I most frequently use and a lot of people on the master's committee use after some research is that you simply start to work in the round and you make sure that you pull the first row, first stitch, very tight, and the second one very tight. Now, the reason why there's some discussion about this is that uh, if you don't do that, you're going to get a lot of loose, ugly yarn in between. And in this method, when you're finished, you do the cleanup with your yarn tail to make sure that it looks nice. And I'll have photos of these posted in my blog. The other method where you don't cast on any extra stitches is where, again I've checked to see that I'm not twisted here, I slip the first cast on stitch to my right needle and I slip and pass over the first cast on stitch, the last cast on stitch, so that it's on the left needle and the first is on the right needle and then I simply start to work. And again, what I'll do is I will have photos of these in my blog so you can compare them and see which one you like best. Now the next two methods require that you cast on an additional stitch. And the first is one, and again I'm going to take care when I look at these to make sure I don't have anything twisted. You can see that when you're doing this on circulars or double points, it's real easy that you get these stitches twisted around. And uh, so you want to take care, as every pattern will tell you, not to twist the stitches when you're joining in the round. Now, in this method, what you do is you cast on one extra stitch at the very, very end. And like the method we just saw, I'm going to pass the first stitch here and then I'm going to pass the last stitch over it. And this is a lot easier if you don't have, if you have more stitches than I've got. Okay, I'm going to pass that one over, and then I'm going to put that first stitch back, and then I'm going to pull on my yarn tail real tight, and that stitch disappears. It's become, uh, it's anchoring, it's around the first stitch. You always want to make sure you're not grabbing your yarn tail, but that you're grabbing your working yarn. And then you just go ahead and work the stitches. And if you pull on the yarn tail, that should help that a bit. Okay, that's method three. And the final method that you can use, and again, I'll have videos posted of all of these guys so you can compare when I've got a couple of rows done is similar to that last one. You need to have an excess extra stitch at the end. And what you do once you've untangled all of this, mm, is I'm going to pass the last stitch over to the first and I'm going to simply work those two together and depending on your pattern you might be purling, you might be knitting, but you're just going to work those two together and then you're going to proceed. 
Now, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and um, work several more rows on all of these, and I will post little photos showing eeks. Dropped a stitch there. Um, so you can compare and see which method you like best. In the master's program, all methods are 